Looking for Sally, the podcast. Looking for Sally, episode one, part two. James and Charlie are on their way south. Sally woke up in a state of shock in a hotel room in her native Boston. But is she really back to reality? Meanwhile, here we go again. In Seattle, local law enforcement continues their investigation into the disappearance of dozens of young women who are tied to prostitution rings. Currently, not one but several kidnappers are suspected. While a nationwide search is underway, law enforcement has not ruled out the possibility that these women might have either been taken out of the country or even murdered. We will keep you up to date as more leads come in. This world has gone mad. Eddie doesn't know it, but the Ford Mustang that has just passed his pickup truck on Interstate 90 belongs to James. Their fates separate momentarily. Seriously, you could have a real GPS, Dad. Who needs a GPS? Just read the signs. It's an 11-hour drive to Des Moines. We'll stop before dark. Ooh, shall we go to the restaurant? If you like. That's quite a detour, Iowa. I just want to avoid Canada, sweetheart. Charlie speaking? Yeah, hold on, Mike. Jay, are you okay? Mike, what's wrong? I just wanted to check on you after what happened. We're still on the road. Listen, dude, I gotta tell you, there's rumors going around again. I'm not really surprised. Something else. Cops came by the shop asking all kinds of stuff. Wanted to talk about you, you know? Kind of guy you are? I guess they're just doing their job. I don't know, man. Something's going down and I got a bad feeling about this. Just be careful with the kid, alright? Of course I'll be careful. I'll call you when I can. What did he mean by again? Nothing you need to know. 8 p.m. Interstate Motel, Central Iowa. James and Charlie are relieved to trade the confined cabin for a room to stretch out in. Maybe they shouldn't be. Thank God, I'm starving. It's almost supernatural. Why don't you go find a place to satisfy your supernatural hunger while I book a room? Or anything that looks like one. Maybe you shouldn't watch this before bed. You'll have nightmares. I don't need this to have nightmares. Dad? It's nothing serious, sweetie. Just a power outage. It's all around. You should do what normal people do and get some sleep. Crap. I heard that. Hmm. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking tequila won't do me much good. Well, you're wrong. As Charlie drifts off into a deep sleep, and the dizziness of alcohol gradually permeates James's mind, something awakens in the shadows. So who's the loser now? He's there, watching them. He could touch them. But it's not time yet. So he lurks behind the drafty curtain. In his drunken delirium, James thinks his imagination is playing a game with him. You're not real. It's just a fucking bug. The next morning, Interstate Motel, Central Iowa. 
power and internet back on, it seems. Hmm. I'll take that as a guess. Don't take too long getting ready, okay? I'd like to leave early. Charlie watches the rain-laden gusts of wind. Her father seems much calmer this morning. Almost too much so. She liked to tell him about the nightmares, but she's afraid of saying too much. So she keeps quiet. She writes in her notebook, crosses it out, rewrites. So, where to now? Her father doesn't answer. Drops the sweat bead on his pale forehead. Dad, are you alright? You're pale. Really pale. I'm okay. You're not gonna faint, are you? The direction wavers, as does his gaze from the road to the rear view mirror. Charlie doesn't understand and gauges the situation anxiously. If he flinches, will she know how to react? James jerks the steering wheel sharply to the right. He nearly hits another vehicle. Dad! In a flash of lucidity, James regains control. Charlie trembles. If she listened carefully, she could hear someone laughing in the back seat. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry. You almost killed us. Please, we need to stop. Anywhere, but we need to stop. It's all right, Charlie. Are you kidding me? You passed out while you were driving at full speed. It's over, Charlie. It's past. You should stop and get something. I mean it. There must be some of Mom's tranquilizers left somewhere. Charlie, I said no. No pills. You saw where that got her. Boston. Same day. 2 p.m. Sally lies face down on a hotel room carpet. Her mind wanders between past and present. The memory of the fatal incident that cost her her nursing career and the anguish that grows, forcing her conscience to awaken. <gasps> but she's no longer in the hospital. Hello? And the smell of food wafting through the door also awakens her appetite. A voracious, sickly appetite. Sally gets up, awkwardly, to clutch the edge of the bed and reach for the telephone on the bedside table. Perception, what can we do for you? I'd like someone to bring me breakfast. I'm not feeling very well. So, would you like something for lunch? Yes, lunch, I mean. Yeah, we can order something for you if you like. Yes, pizza. Two, two pizza. The family is special. Thank you very much. We'll get it to you as soon as we can, madame. Sally knows this hunger isn't natural. There's a monster hiding deep in her stomach, demanding to be fed. So, on wobbly leg, she stands up, rummages in her bag for coins. Saliva rises to her dry, greedy mouth. As soon as she steps into the hallway, Sally feels sick. She knows she shouldn't have, but the machine is only a few feet away. So she leaves the door open, just enough to slip through if someone should arrive. She moves forward. The fever starts to rise, and she fights against an insane pressure. There are 
something wrong with you, Sonny. What the hell did you get yourself into? What did they make you take? The Mustang continues on its way. Charlie stares at her father, but James doesn't take his eyes off the road. If it happened again, she was certain they wouldn't make it. We've got to stop. What is it now? I have to pee. A sign reads Cheriton River. Unexpectedly, the name brings back memories James thought were buried. All right, I need a break anyway. I'll be over here. The November air makes him shiver. They're absolutely alone in this area on the banks of the Cheriton River, which flows quietly towards the lake. The eyes that appeared in the rear view mirror, the terrible nausea that made him lose his footing, could only be due to fatigue. After all, they've been on the road for days. But what if he came back? One by one, James pushes the bags back onto the side of the trunk. His fingers slip under the boot liner, lifting it delicately. He pulls out a long object wrapped in a thick cloth. There you are. It's the only one James had time to take before leaving home. The sharpest. Mike even had a name for the machete. Misery. There you go. I'm ready, motherfucker. Hey, Lou. Are you done yet? Just about. Your mind's been on another team since you go back. The garage won't run itself, you know? I know, my love, but I can't stop thinking about it. You're a young kid? I should have asked her name. She looked like she needed help. Forget her. People like that are not in good trouble. You're probably right. Daddy? You're starting by yourself now? Are you Christine or what? Mm. Charlie Anderson speaking. Wait, where? Hold on, slow down. Okay, I'm, I'm taking notes, but... It doesn't make sense. Yes, I'm I'm telling my dad. Thanks for calling. <sighs> joke wasn't funny. What joke? <sighs> Never mind. A guy from Seattle PD called. They said they've got a lead. Her card was used at a hotel in Lawrence. In Kansas. I had the same reaction. It doesn't make any sense. I say we go home. We can't do that, Charlie. Why can't we? Look at us. I know, Charlie, but I made a promise that we wouldn't go home without your mother. Find out where it is with modern magic. I want to know for sure. Okay, but I hope it's not some creepy roadside motel. I heard the cockroach is stirring all last night. Wow, 
It's the Kansas Overlook Hotel. Must cost an arm. How are you today? Checking in? Here's your card, sir. Third floor. Come on, let's not hang around here. Still making you nervous after all this time, huh? Planes and elevators. Anything that goes up. Anything I don't fly myself. Thank God for that. I'll never move from this room again. You'll have to. Don't expect me to eat those disgusting sandwiches again. Some places feel like a refuge. Charlie sprawls on her bed while her father disappears into the bathroom. What if that's where her mother had slept a few days earlier? Maybe she could have felt her energy, seen her shadow pass by. The shadows are never what they seem to be. There was a leaflet in the lobby! I know where we should go! We'll start by looking around the hotel and see if anyone's met your mother. James suddenly freezes. He holds the damp towel in his hands and his reflection in the mirror has changed. It's no longer him, but a man with eyes blazing like marbles of fire watching him. There's something familiar and at the same time terrifying about him. Dad, is everything all right? I'm fine. The vision disappears as suddenly as it appeared. The feeling of unease, however, remains clinging to his gut. Did you hear what I said? Hmm. I'm sure this place is haunted. Charlie, there's no such thing as ghosts. If you say so. By the way, I put the dirty laundry in a bag. I'll take care of it tomorrow, Charlie. Don't forget. Did you get any answers? Nobody's seen your mother here. I'm sorry, Dad. Let's give ourselves a couple of days just in case and get back on the road to Boston. What do you think? Garb. Yes, my daughter? She's the one who left. Stop feeling guilty. Have a drink. Listen to this. Stull's Cemetery. They say there's a staircase in the basement of the old church, and if you go down it, all the way, you'll find the gateway to hell. Oh, please, not again. Come on, we have got to see that. What do you find so interesting about visiting a cemetery? I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps you can try later. I'm really annoyed. I wouldn't want to leave my wife alone for so long. There's room for one more. Well, that's very kind of you, young lady. People usually call me Charlie. You're welcome. And people usually call me Gus, which is nice because that's my name. And I suppose that's your dad? James. Ah, I won't bother you. I'll make myself invisible. We've come all the way from Ohio. It's a long trip for people our age. Reminds me of my days as a traveling salesman. <clears throat> Where do you come from? Seattle. On vacation? Funeral. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Ava's right. I'm far too curious. So it's just the two of you? Mommy got held up. <coughs> Dad, I'm not feeling well. You want us to move? Yes, please. Nice meeting you. 
See you tomorrow. Or never. Night has extinguished rumors and conversations in the hotel corridors. James's sleep is filled with disturbing creatures. Charlie, on the other hand, doesn't sleep. She's kneeling in the middle of a salt circle. The bottle she borrowed from the hotel restaurant lies beside her bare feet. Her backpack is open like a beast's belly, vomiting out all kinds of talismans. The flame of the candle in front of her flickers with each breath she takes. Red and green, sweet embrace, cast evil out of this place. Charlie? Shit. Charlie, what's going on here? What the hell are you doing? Sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to wake you. What's that supposed to mean? What are you thinking? You know there are smoke detectors, right? I'm sorry. Clean up all this crap and go to bed. No more bullshit. I'm sorry. You can explain tomorrow. I'm just gonna go take a picture of the gazebo. I'll be right back. I'll wait for you on the bench. Hello? Jay, buddy, how are you? As well as I can be. Hey, listen, man. I gotta warn you. Police are back at the shop. They're convinced you're involved. That's a load of crap. Sally had a breakdown. This kind of thing happens every day. I'm serious about this. I think that Karen woman told them something. I shouldn't even be talking to you. You gotta be kidding me. I don't even know this woman. I know, Jay. It's crazy. I told them. Look, I don't want to talk about this anymore. You'll end up doing it, Jay. The voice comes out of nowhere. And no matter how hard James's gaze clings to those around him, he knows that this voice is not from this world. Still angry about the ritual? No, sweetie, it's not you. Is it about Mom? Did the police call? Not the police, Mac. They think I did something. You know that's BS. Yes, I know. We shouldn't even be talking about this. Let's find your mother and everything will be back the way it was. Listen, Dad. There's something I need to tell you. Hey. Oh, God. Please not him. How did he find us? I say we should run. Too late. Meanwhile, outside the Anderson's home in Seattle, fate sometimes looks like a talkative old man. Sometimes it looks like a woman willing to do anything to fulfill her macabre ambitions. Poor Sal. It's a mess in here. There's truly something wrong with you for leaving thumbtacks lying around in a bedroom. You'll soon be rid of this scum, darling, and so will I. It's only a matter of time. It's the small things. You don't notice them. Like pebbles along the path that lead you where you need to go. Shit, the laundry. Or a bag in front of the door. Its contours dancing before your eyes. Voices rising in your head in the grip of alcohol's sweet dizziness. Long days, long nights. Charlie. Leave us alone. 
Leave him alone. Any program, the beast, as long as you let me sleep. Holy cow! This is a hell of a time to be down. Sometimes, in the darkest moments of the night, evil spirits can take on a familiar appearance. Anybody here? And because we don't know any better, we answer them. I'm over here a few steps up. Oh, thank God it's you. The elevators are broken. Wait for me. I went down to the lobby to get some pills for Ava, and on the way back, damn, no more elevator. I noticed. I feel so much more comfortable going up with you. I can't see so well in the dark. What floor is your room on? Just above yours. Follow me up. <sighs> I need to stop for a moment. Hold on to the rail, Gus. Damn, I can't reach it. Grab my hand. It's a space of a second that separates balance from a fall. A hand stretched too far. A dizzy spell at the wrong moment. James's gaze is transfixed, and time with it, as old Gus crashes the landing below. A sinister crack echoes in James's wheezing eardrums. His broken neck lies at an improbable angle with the rest of his body. And James finally understands. Fuck, fuck, fuck. 